I want to bring in pop culture expert John Murray. He knows Jesse Smollett personally. Uh, John, Smollett surprised a lot of people this week when he went straight from the courthouse to the set of Empire and then doubled down on his innocence to his castmates. How much backing does he have on the set of the show right now, especially because he was written out of the final two episodes of this season? Well, Ryan, you know, optics are everything. And Empire and Fox had to make a decision that was best for the show and best for their franchise. But um, I've been talking to people very close to the Empire set, some of the higher-ups, and they tell me that they're conflicted because they saw the press conference, they saw what the superintendent in Chicago presented in their case about Jesse Smollett, but they feel like they know him personally. They have a relationship with him. And mm -hmm. they believe their guy, and so they're not joining the canceled culture, uh, the bandwagon mob mentality where everybody tells you what you are to believe and how you are to execute those beliefs. And Terrence Howard in particular has always been an outlier. So he's never going to abandon somebody that he calls mm -hmm. friend. You know, the cast of Empire sees him really as a family. They're going to stand by their guy because their guy is standing by his story. Hmm. You know, obviously there's been a lot of criticism uh, in uh, Jesse Smollett's direction. Uh, but, you know, there's a season for all of these things, right? Uh, is there a possibility that you could see him redeeming himself uh, and that he could end up working in Hollywood on a regular basis again? Ryan, this is either going to make for one hell of a lifetime movie or it's going to be the most amazing crossover episode between Empire and Law and & Order. But this is what I know for sure. If the criminal justice system does find him guilty, I don't believe there's a space for him to work in this business. Because mm. as a person who was the face of two marginalized groups who said these things happened to him, if it turns out to actually be a hoax, I don't believe Hollywood would welcome him back in any regard. If he mm. turns out to be telling the truth, and he's got Mark Garagos now out, and the stories have been coming out uh, contending the things that the superintendent of Chicago has said all weekend long, if they can prove that this guy is innocent, well, he'll be back to work on Empire. Hmm. So that same judge who oversaw the Smollett bond hearing uh, oversaw R. Kelly's hearing yesterday, and they said his total bond at a million dollars on sex abuse charges. Uh, R. Kelly's still in jail tonight because he, he couldn't come up with the money. A uh, part of the problem is that he do, owes hundreds of uh, thousands of dollars in overdue child support payment. He's also facing eviction from his studio. Uh, should we be surprised about his financial situation given the millions of dollars that he's earned over the course of his career? Well, I'm not surprised because I've known people very close to R. Kelly's camp, and I've understood that there's been a history of mismanagement of funds, of him uh, selling off parts of his publishing. But here's the thing. The general public, they're pretty shocked. This guy mm -hmm. has done 17 studio solo albums. He's done uh, a movie, the, the Trapped in the Closet series for FX. Mm -hmm. He's done DVDs and soundtracks, and he's written hits for some of the biggest stars known to man. But the reality is that he has sold off parts of his publishing over the years, uh, Universal music publishing dropped him even before Sony Music parted ways with him back in January. But what I believe is happening here is R. Kelly is hoping uh, for the, the work week to start and he'll probably approach companies like Sound Exchange and BMI who do performance rights revenue and try mm -hmm. to get advance money from them which will help him make his bail. I did see that one of the fans started a GoFundMe page but they'd only mm -hmm. raised $370. So they're a long way from meeting the goal of bailing out their favorite singer. <laughs> Yeah, well, a long way. That's a good way to put it. Now, you've interviewed R. Kelly before. and You know people that work at his house in Chicago. We've only got about a minute left uh, before the end of our program tonight. I mean, what's the reaction from the people that you're talking to now that he's facing these very graphic charges? Well, I don't want to share specific stories about what the people told me that were working in the house, but I will say this. The things that they told me are worse than I've heard mm. from most horror films. The things that R. Kelly has done, according to the folks that I know that was working there, were horrendous. Now, when I met R. Kelly and I interviewed him at his house in Chicago, he was a very charismatic, very nice guy, and we talked openly about him being illiterate, his work with Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, a lot of other things. So I can see how people can be engaged by him. I yeah. see why some of his fans are sticking with him. But R. Kelly, he's got justice to face. Wow. John Murray, uh, terrific uh, insight. We so appreciate you being on with us. Uh, have a terrific night. Anytime, Ryan. All right.